Alrighty, what up everybody? We're here playing the Testament of Sherlock Holmes. You mean Shix? We're playing Shix. Sherlock Holmes Dix? Shix with Dix. We have a dude drinking Starbucks over here. And hopefully, if you see a lot of edits in this video, my recording software is sucking hardcore right now. So, if you see any edits, that's why. Do I need to know what happened in Sherlock Holmes 1 through 5? Oh yeah, about that, no. Yeah, starting a game. You play Sherlock Holmes 5, Jack the Ripper. Anything interesting happened there? Was it was really clunky. That did, was the fifth one? Yes. Did you defeat Jack the Ripper? Jack the Ripper's not real. So, Maybe Sherlock Holmes though, but... Sherlock Holmes 5 was all in his imagination. No. Well, I guess, well, he was real, but I'm sure how much is. Do we already see this? Yeah, you must have not heard a start. You know, the fine folk that Frog Lair is. Oh, no, we got stuff. Let's do it. The graphics are 20 million times better than the fucking last one. <laughs> There's a pony. That's a kid. No, the black. I see it now. Oh. About to do a magic trick. I really thought she was going to disappear. Like the hell is it? She just goes right there. Ah. What's this? No. She got a magnifying glass, so she must be a detective too. This must be seems legit. legit. This must be the great kids. Is that Watson? They got turned into puppets. I can see this happening. You shake watch. Don't touch. You bitch. Ooh. Are these kids the one who kills Sherlock Holmes? I'm thinking oh, it's the look. grandkids. It's a book. <laughs> Maybe it's a book about pirates with a treasure map. Which one is this? I don't know. No, I don't think so. I wish that I had seen through all your lies. They oh, all look like puppets. The beginning, yeah. not the middle. The audio is not off, guys. It's just their voice. And so I decided to pick up Worst my lips and to relate the most yeah, disturbing episode of my life thus far. Why it all began early one morning in 1898. When Sherlock sure. Holmes invited me to accompany him on a visit to the Marquis of Conningham. You start off as Watson. What up, homie? Is that Watson? That's Holmes. That's Holmes. Then you're a Watson. Watson, my dear fellow. We can now go and inform the Marquis that we have found the Samoan necklace, and very much faster than Inspector Baines, too, which pleases me. Have you really solved the theft, Holmes? And so quickly? I have indeed, Watson. And believe me, it was completely unnecessary to spread out all over like London, to as our friend Dane thought was best. <laughs> he likes to boast that his methods are equal to mine, but once again, the outcome has contradicted him. After all these years of accompanying you upon your investigations, I thought that by now I should be reasonably capable of following your train of thought. But in this particular case, I must admit that I don't understand anything at all. Ah, you see, but you do not observe, Watson. There lies the difference. It is a matter of course. Yeah, this is a lip sync again, Carl. I can't believe it. A matter of course. I'm In just reading the, the text, text, dude. When yeah, everyone is, is fast asleep, the service bell within that room rings out and alerts the servants. They dress quickly and come running. But the door is locked and there is a strong smell of burning from within. A few seconds later, the master of the house himself, 
the robbed Marchioness's husband, the Marquis of Conningham, arrives and unlocks the door using the sole key. A fire has started inside the room, but they have managed to arrive in time to put it out. It is at that moment that the Marquis realizes that the famous Samoan necklace, which had been safe within its glass cabinet only a few hours earlier, has now disappeared. In order to explain, let us confirm my theory before the arrival of Inspector Baines. I thought you said they already did that. He knows. He just wants to Should walk through, through it? it so that you know. Oh my god. After he got done telling Watson, I'm a boss, I just let you follow around with me. Ridiculous. This window was cut with a diamond. A clean, discreet piece of work. This is where the necklace was. See how tiny the hole is, and not one fingerprint upon the window. It's so dark, but I can't see it. <laughs> you always interact with A. So it's like Gears of War, pal. You should, you Dude, should... I'm going to pick up on this shit so fast. Fish tank have anything to do with Can I play the piano real quick? No? No? They just want him to click A? Then you go to the left window. This window oh. was cut with a dime. God damn it! Skip! Yeah. Damn. Piece of work. No. No. Thanks. A mark undoubtedly made by a diamond. Someone tried to cut the glass, but he was interrupted. Therefore, the thief tried to escape through the window, but he was interrupted. No shit! And Watson just repeated everything he said. <laughs> What's the little magnifying glass underneath the window? Underneath the window. Yeah, okay. All the windows are locked. They've not been forced. Yeah, because... I'm sure it's a chimney. I don't like that it tells me where to go. Well, this is the tutorial. Yeah, this already happened, remember? I thought he been had that in his hand. God. Shit, he ought to shake some bitches. What the fuck? Oh, they want to use a magnifying glass on the, the notes cup. Okay. Hey, how you select it? No, wait, what's. Want me to look at this? No. Where the fuck does it want me to do? Take a look, I'll be that's by switching your weapons. Oh, your items. oh, oh that's quicker though. Yeah, and then you just press the air somewhere. Let us examine the crumpled oh, scores yeah, 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 that form the piano. These sooty prints were left by a tiny hand. I don't understand it's why these music print. scores are covered with Who soot. Is this, Mr. O'Brien? <laughs> no, Mr. O'Brien sucked. <laughs> Oh, you can see. Oh, wow. This is the deal of first person. RT is sprint. Yup. Oh, no. There we go. Wow. He has a LT is six cents. <laughs> They're like bots from Gears of War? I can relate to this game. How in the hell does he have a six cents? Oh, what's that? You can switch it and click on with anything. Look at this draft screen makes an ideal hiding place. As the theft was committed at night, I conclude that the thief hid himself behind the draft screen and waited until he was alone in the room. I think I can see that happening, but... Strange. There aren't any prints. Yet I'm sure that the thief hid here. Well, why... Why should Clue stop here? Just... just... Right. What else could you possibly... A candle. It must have fallen from the chandelier. He was hiding in the chandelier. No one saw it. First person mode, maybe? Can you look at the same with the first person mode? No? That's weird. Okay, uh. Mm -hmm. The fish tank? Not very well kept, this aquarium. I can see a dead fish floating on the surface. Okay, back out of this person. <laughs> Where are you going to go? I'm supposed to get looking for clues. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a shit ton over so here. So much shit you can look at. The chest wasn't opened. The necklace wasn't in it. Oh wow, so someone just there just chasing giggles. We have to be smart and just use the right ones. 
The fire started here, just beneath the bell pull. Whoever pulled the cord would have had his feet in the fire, unless it was pulled before the fire started. Well, now you look straight down. Footprints. You are not going to get on your knees to examine them. There is no need. It is soot. The servants no must need. have trodden for, it. Sure, I can't not get fire. on his knees for anybody. Did you activate the sixth sense car? <laughs> was, was that uh, LTRT? LT. Yeah, that one. So Heading towards his again. chosen escape route, probably the window, the thief knocked over the stool, which then caught fire. But why didn't he try to put the fire out at once? Oh, Should I answer? Her? <laughs> Strange. There are some objects here that have been knocked over. Okay, so when they go green, have you seen them? Yeah. All right, Holmes. Let's get the when the servants arrived at the door, having been alerted by the bell, they saw evidence of the theft and the fire, but they didn't see the thief. This door is very hard to force. The Marquis is the only person to have the key. The thief could not get out he through here it. until eventually, when the door was opened by the servants. No way. Look at these ah, cinematics. Mr. Holmes, you're already here. Good morning, Inspector. You've arrived just in time. <laughs> Scotland Yard arrives like the cavalry, always in the nick of time. Ah, but I know that satisfied expression, Mr. Holmes. Have you already solved the case? It's possible. We have retraced the thief's rather unusual footsteps. He is a true acrobat. But what I cannot understand is that when the servants entered the room, there was no one to be seen. An acrobat, perhaps, but an invisible one? <laughs> I do not think so. The only explanation is that the thief escaped before the servants arrived. I don't know how, but there is no other way. Half a point for the doctor, nil for the inspector. I am pleased to see that you find the situation amusing, Mr. Holmes. Very well then, explain. Dr. Watson was correct when he mentioned acrobatics, but he is mistaken about the nature of the acrobat. As for you, Baines, you're quite incorrect, as the thief was in the room when the servants entered. Explain, for heaven's sake, Mr. Holmes. Watson, how could a thief be missed in the middle of eight men? Hmm? I don't know, because he is very... That's cool, I don't think so. Stop teasing us, Holmes. Exactly. Because he is small, small and remarkably agile. You're thinking of a monkey? And a trained monkey at that, without a doubt, a Leontopicathus rosalia from Central America. Of course, Indian monkey. That, that, <laughs> the the monkey. had been hidden inside the room for several hours, calmly awaiting the signal from his master. Once night had fallen and the room was empty, a high-frequency whistle alerted the monkey that it was time to begin the procedure for which he had been trained. The monkey emerged from his hiding place and used the point of a diamond to open the glass cabinet and steal the necklace. He headed across to the window by the chimney, but knocked over the stool, which in turn knocked aside the fire guard and started the fire. The frightened monkey jumped from it's the chimney by swinging from the bell pool, thus alerting the house servants. He then went to the window and began to use his diamond to cut a hole, but was interrupted by the staff trying to gain entry via the door, and he panicked again. He ran across the piano, scattering the music scores onto the floor, before hiding inside the chandelier, knocking over a candle. Finally. The servants and the Marquis entered the room, leaving the door open while they put out the fire. It was during the confusion that our agile little thief made his escape through the doorway. A simple Smartest attack. monkey A brilliant ever. explanation. Bravo, Holmes. And the necklace? I can see it from here, my friends. It's right in front of us. We have searched the room from top to bottom, Holmes. How were we unable to find it? because we paid insufficient attention to the only victim of this affair. What victim? No one is dead? Yes, Watson. A poor goldfish, whose destiny was to die, crushed by one of the most precious necklaces in England. The aquarium is just beneath the chandelier. I understand. The little monkey had likely hung the necklace around its neck and lost it when he leapt from the chandelier. 
the jewels fell into the aquarium where they remain now. I'm gonna shake this fish until like jewels pop out. Of that shit just proved. How did I look in the fish tank? That made no sense. <laughs> Damn you. Or Sherlock Holmes, only one that can look inside fish tanks. Marquis, here is your necklace. Intact. Just a little wet. Mr. Holmes, this brilliant demonstration does credit to your reputation. Thank you so much, Marquis. Yeah, Do you wish to verify the authenticity of your jewel? No, I recognize it. I have spent many hours admiring it, you know. Good. I will return it to its box and... Inspector! A bank has just been held up! You must follow me at once! Orders of Scotland Yard! What times? Sirs, duty calls. My regards, Marquis. And well done again, Mr. Holmes. Let's give him money. There, the necklace is in its box. We've lost enough time here. Let's go home, Watson. Ah, very well, as you wish. A good day to you, Marquis. Like how fast With pleasure, home. gentlemen. Jack and so. once again... <laughs> <laughs> All the explanation. He put a fake necklace in there, like, I'm taking this one for my style. <laughs> That That's it. probably right. Oh my god. Quick, remember that I learned my whole monkey thing was just made up. <laughs> They're still hitting catch the guy who trained the monkey. Right? That's not sure it comes job. I guess if they got to do it right now, it's okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> this morning's newspaper. Holmes, have you read this article about you? No, Watson, not yet. And I won't have time to. Read it before you leave. It's outrageous. If you insist. Oh, he says you're gonna read it. Okay. Sherlock Holmes at the home of the Marquis. Oh, snap. See, look at that. The investigation is a fiasco. <laughs> Disappearing. <laughs> Somebody said disappeared. Oh no, I didn't mysteriously vanish. Prince Woodville, French culinary expert and bagpipe player, might be our next king. That's not so shocking, my dear fellow. You know exactly to which article I'm referring, Holmes. How can Farley dare to tarnish your reputation like that? You know, Watson, that wherever glory walks, jealousy is bound to follow. As for the forgery of the necklace, I suspect that we shall soon be enlightened in this regard. Come in, Inspector Baines, the door's open. <laughs> Six cents. Ah, Mr. Holmes. How did you know I was here? You are one of our rare visitors who avoids the second to last step of the stairs, which creaks dreadfully. And if I add the clinking of the handcuffs at your belt, to what do we owe the pleasure of your visit, Inspector? Have you read that, Rag? Huh? Huh? Slender? Necklace? What? What does slander mean? Just like someone... You gonna slap him? No. Inspector, can you explain this slander? Has the necklace Damn. of the Samoas really been replaced by a fake? Slander is like saying the something they didn't do. It's true. About the necklace, of course. I wouldn't permit myself to question the integrity and honesty of Mr. <laughs> Basically, it's The BBB. necklace is a forgery? <laughs> Impossible! I saw the Marquis authenticated before my very eyes, before Holmes returned it to its place. Mr. Holmes, the Marquis believes Osmond Farley's theory. I shouldn't be surprised if the reporter isn't behind all this slander about you. He's a freelancer. Well known for his explosive and subjective articles. In any case, the Marquis assures us that you were the last person to have the necklace in your hands. Let's return to the Marquis's house. I'm sure that we'll have no trouble in taking apart this theory. It is unnecessary. Such allegations collapse on their own, like one of Mrs. Hudson's souffles. Let us leave the police to solve this problem and turn our attention to the matters in hand. Perhaps you are right, Holmes. Inspector, I assume that you have the fake necklace with you. It's why you're here. Your superiors would like me to examine it. Indeed. They would like you to confirm or deny putting this fake in the box. Can't that wait? I must go to the house of Lord Peregrine Maitland, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. Oh, shit. And the Marchioness. She is beside herself. Without the necklace, her marriage is compromised. It is the principal item of the young woman's dowry. What a lovely marriage. 
Holmes, forgive me for insisting, but don't you want to examine the fake jewelry? Watson, I have an appointment, and it's out Watson, of the question to arrive. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> you a couple of minutes. You really must quell the suspicions put forward in this appalling article. If you I'm trying to get me, away with something here, Watson. Why did you keep talking? Very well. <laughs> Oh, there's no Holmes. I'm not talking to him. Fuck that. What do you think, Holmes? Where the hell is it? Do I need to look this shit or what? Where is it? Oh. Oh, it's on the table. Looks fake to me. Oh my god. Find out if it's authentic or not. Six cents. Six cents. Oh, what's that? This pearl is a different color. You know six cents is gonna work, Kyle. Oh, okay. That's much easier. I'm getting dizzy. There's three more random colors. What the fuck? These three pearls are of poor quality. Seems legit. Oh, oh, oh. Did you just use the six cents on yeah. the book? This pearl is too small. It is not in its place here. Too many defects. This necklace is a fake. Wait, did that no one else could spot that? Right? Copy, and at a glance, it would appear that the forger has intended for it to be seen as such. How could we have been fooled by such a blatant imitation? I don't understand. Yes, how like is it four. possible? Holmes, do you have a theory about this? I have absolutely no idea. You insisted that I examine the necklace, and I have done so. Now it is important that I keep my appointment. I'm sure, Inspector, that you will throw some light on this affair. Chuck Holmes, taking necklaces. What do I think exactly this necklace is? If you care to do so. Goodbye, Doctor. Probably has. He's done a way better job. <laughs> Goodbye, Inspector. You mentioned a bishop, didn't you? Are we going to his home? Yes, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. I put his address on our map of London on my desk. Would you get it for me, please? All right, Holmes. The work table, where Holmes analyzes things. Bah! You need to pick up the map. Holmes's homemade. Oh my god, where are you? I don't know. How many desks does this do need? I have found your map. 